All right, I'm going to try to rush through two different presentations at once, and we'll see how this goes. Um, you don't need your laptops for this or anything, and I think it's going to be very important for you to just make sure you download these files because there are a lot of links included in here that I'm not going to click out from Explore, but I want you all have those links available in place you can find them. So, start with, I'm going to talk about kind of getting involved with imaging and analysis. If you're not just doing this for fun and you actually want to make a career out of it or something, uh, give you some places to look for more information and groups to join. Then I'll let, go through the QPath related materials very quickly and I will spend a little bit more time on the image SC forums. Hopefully most people here have joined or created an account. If not, it's a great time to, well, actually now I guess given the internet connection, maybe not a great time to, but during dinner maybe. All right. And then I'll talk a little bit about scripting and probably skim through the AI, but we'll see if people have questions there. All right. Um, professional societies. I am a member of quite a few here. My biggest one is probably Corep Nimi. And if you've ever kind of read in my microscopy method section or read about some image analysis and said, I can't follow this, or how do I redo this myself? This is the group for you. We are trying to push for better standards for both um, publication and generation of images. And in general, try to make microscopy data more reproducible across labs around the world. So that way we can use someone else's data set because at the moment, sometimes, even if you shared an open data set, it's hard to use without appropriate metadata and information about how it was collected. Uh, we'll do a slide on bioimaging North America next. And quantitative bioimaging, there's a couple couple day conference coming up right here. Uh, we'll ask me to talk about that in just a moment. And then if you're more interested in the hardware side of things, uh, Optica and SPIE are some paid societies which are good for kind of professional development and they have a lot of workshops and conferences that you can join. All right, you want to say something about that? Yeah. Yes, so Quantitative Bioimaging Society, the membership is free. Um, they are nonprofit, they look for donations, but it is free membership. When you're a member, you can get access to recorded videos from past conferences. And um, we are actually running a conference um, that is following this course. Um, and um, I wanted to point out that poster from Brad um, that will be um, dealing with reducing of alcofluorescence in FFP tissues. Um, people that are in this society um, are very nice and friendly. And um, if you have um, quantitative Microscopy of heart, that's a, that's a good group to try. And, oops. So again, there are many clickable things in these presentations once you have them. All right, um, Bioimaging North America is a you know, North American centric group for improving the uh, bioimaging in general um, and creating a place for people to talk about their various projects or create professional opportunities. Uh, talking to the organizers, it sounds like it's very heavy on core, my core microscopy facility folk. So if you're interested in recruiting for your core facility or talking to other core facility members about things they have that work or don't work, this could be a very good group for you. Although it's not limited to core facilities, they're still building a user base right now. And um, so if you are inter interested in these sorts of things, I just wanted to have a quick example here that they're having a high impact supervisory skills seminar because a lot of the times we go from being scientists to being managers in a very short period of time and could always use help with the soft skills side of things. So good group to join if you're interested in that. And if you're not in North America, there are a lot of other options for you. If you go to the Bioimaging North America partners page, you can find out about some of those for whatever region you happen to be from. Or if there isn't one in your current region, you could probably reach out to the organizers and try and form a collaboration to get something started. I also mentioned the Digital Pathology Association as another group you could join. I believe that's paid. I haven't been a member for a few years, but it, they have a Path Visions conference, which is pretty big. The official resources. Um, Start with the main docs. Uh, this is a good resource. Uh, just make sure you have the latest at the end there because you do have all the different versions of QPath where the read the docs existed that you can go back through. Um, and if you kind of save your link to 0 0.4.4, you will just always, uh, fav or if you favorite that, you'll just always go to the 4.4 version. I just gonna point that out. Pete covered his bioimage book better than I do too, but uh, just pointing out that it's also a good resource for general bioimage analysis information. 
And then there's two main YouTube channels I'd recommend. The first one is QPath, and that has a lot of information about and guides for how to run QPath and a lot of examples. And then there's the at Pete Bankhead, which I wish he was here because they make fun of him for being a dead channel. And then he just populated it recently with the uh, sort of a visual or presentation version of the bioimage book. All right. Um, I'm just going to kind of skip through this because this is videos that you can access if you're interested in any of these types of things. Um, and get to the image SC forum. So this is the place for questions and official support. Uh, if you have any general questions or even you think you might have a bug and aren't sure, this is the place to go. Pete prefers it here first before GitHub. He will often create the GitHub issue himself after someone posts on the forum. So this is the way to go. Um, and yeah, please do create an account because sometimes the you think you you want to ask a question, but you don't have the account set up, and you're like, ah, oh, I have to create an account, and I'll just try and work it out myself. So just have that account created, and then you can ask a question. So what Image SC is? It's a, it's an open source focused uh, forum, and while it's primarily image analysis, a lot of the times the problems you're having with your image analysis problem, it's too many problems, uh, are actually microscope related, or how you're taking the image or preparing the sample. So there are quite a few threads on things like that. Uh, on the other hand, if you do have specific microscope questions, there is a uh, related forum, the micro forum, where you can go and post about that. It is for almost everyone. There are, I would say the ma vast majority of questions are from newish users, um, but there are expert discussions. So if there's some particular topic you're really digging into, I, two of the ones I remember are both color deconvolution and actual uh, image deconvolution, point spread function based. Um, there are some great discussions on that and you can look those up. Um, it's not exclusive for, okay, you don't have to be in open source or asking questions about open source to post on the forum. You do in order to be a community partner, but there are discussions on MRS and other paid software and sometimes comparisons between them. Um, and we encourage uh, commercial people and vendors to post on the forum, though just not in an advertorial manner. Um, David from Visio Farm and Sebastian from Zeiss are two very good examples of you are part of a company and you're kind of concerned about how you should post on the forum, I'd recommend going and looking at their history of comments and seeing what a, a good way to contribute to the forum is. So this isn't just a tiny little kind of tiny forum where you talk into an empty room and don't expect a response. There are on any given weekday, about 20,000 people viewing anonymously and 5,000 people logged in and a little less uh, on the weekends. And we get a, you know, a decent number of signups every day with new topics being created, about 20 per day, 100 posts per day. Basically, it's it's no Slack exchange, but there is there are enough people there to get your questions answered as long as you ask them in an appropriate manner. All right, um, I'm going to go through the interface a little bit right here, but I do want to mention that there are frequently asked questions and form guidelines posts if you're concerned about whether or not your post is OK or you just kind of want to read the rules. Those links will be available to you if you uh, download this document. And I will go through notifications when I open up ImageSC, but I just wanted to mention there are two main ways to kind of follow the forum, both tracking and watching. Watching is more if you want to be involved in a topic, you can like watch QPath and then you will get this little notification. And depending on your email settings, you can get an email every time someone mentions or responds to your post or something like that. Whereas if you just want to say every once in a while, every week or two weeks, check in on the forum, you can track things instead, and then you'll just get a list of unread things, and you can kind of skim through and see if any topic titles are of interest to you. So let's see if anyone's logged in here. All right, we are not logged in. Um, all right, I will show you what I can. Um, so if you click on the drop down for the community partners, this will show you a list of all of our community partners. These are all open source, um, and that can be a tricky topic that I'm not going to dive into, but essentially open source means anyone can use it, including commercial people. So there are at least one or two people who were community partners, but were removed because they did commercial exclusive licenses, or basically if you're commercial, you cannot use their um, software without paying for it. So these are all truly open source. Um, all right, if I go to, so there's two main waves of sorting. So if I click on QPath, I will get a list here of topics that are specifically tagged QPath. It doesn't mean they're exclusively tagged QPath. So for example, here you have QPath, cell photos, QPath extension, Fiji QPath, ABBA. So it's just a filter. And 
uh, there are two different kinds of filters. One is the tag itself, and the other is the category. So if I wanted to just look for job opportunities and QPath, I can filter on those too. Um, once you've signed up, you'll get a login option and like a little uh, form icon up here. You can set your preferences to um, include more or less, uh, I guess, emails about the various forum announcements and various topics. Does anyone have any questions about using the forum or, sorry? Where did it originate? Um, it originated with the image, S oh, sorry, the image J forum. So it was originally an image J forum and I think they combined with the self profiler forum first and pretty sure it's all being paid for by self profiler right now. Um, that's in me, but yeah. And then people started glomming on over time. That's been great. How should we properly ask questions about the forum? It's amazing that you asked that. Um, so information to include when posting, and you could read this as, in order to encourage someone to respond to your post in a timely manner, because no one wants to try and dig the information out of you that they need to answer your question. So first of all, software inversion. This usually is included in your tag, or at least the software part, because if you tag your form post QPath, we at least know that it's QPath, but sometimes people will just post segmentation. And we don't know that your segmentation is actually being done in QPath until you tell us. Uh, the version, of course, is going to be very important. As you have seen to, uh, well, over the last couple of days, things have changed in QPath just for the 0 0.5.0 release candidate. And if you had run into a bug, it very much is important to stay state whether or not you're on the 0 0.4.4 or 0 0.5.0. Uh, the image type, it, just because you say I'm having trouble sorting cells or finding cells in my image, that can mean a lot of different things. Um, so I have like 2D, 3D, bright field, multiplex, could be an MRI image. All these things can be opened and analyzed in QPath, but if you're just asking to help with your segmentation and we don't know what you're looking at, you know, it's difficult. And to kind of build on that, including a sample image whenever possible is great, because that means someone can download your image, test a script on it, and then give you like real feedback about this is what worked, this is what the, these are the results that I got, and even though the forum has a size limit on posting the image directly, you can link to large images either through Google Drive up to 15 gigabytes, just create a throwaway account, or some people host them on Zenodo. All right, uh, and if you can't share your image, sometimes there's just data that you can't share. It's clients, it's proprietary, it's clinical patient data. Uh, well, in some of those cases, you still can't screenshot the image, but let's say you just can't upload it. It's too large, at least provide a screenshot or sometimes a representative image. If it's uh, you know proprietary, you can't share it, but it's an h and &E image, do a Google search, find an h and &E image that looks kind of like the one that you're analyzing and post that. So you don't have to sit there and exhaustively try to describe your problem with words. Finally, or not finally, next, uh, the most important things probably are to have a visual of your goals and a visual of your current results. This is what I'm getting, and then possibly a hand draw, and this is what I want to get. That will be the easiest for us to understand in terms of helping you. The full text of any error messages, which is maybe easier now with the new show log and the log being right there along with the little warning button, which isn't shown on this, but you know, you'll have like a little 99 there maybe or something. And then uh, go ahead and copy that. And I uh, just wanna mention you, you probably are gonna need to click into there, hit control A to get the whole list, copy, and then uh, paste that onto the form. Specifically, how you want to paste that into the form, though, along with code, please use the little uh, slash formatting there. That makes it much easier for someone else to copy that code off of the form and run it on their query, on their QPath, or just read it because it does format the text nicely like this. It's a lot harder to just read the text. And again, if you don't do that, um, very often these uh, quotation marks are formatted as pretty quotation marks which means if you try to copy them back into QPath or another program, it breaks. QPath and that only use the straight quotation marks, not the pretty curved ones. And it's nice that Pete has changed the scripting button to that icon just to kind of clue you in. All right. And finally, be nice. Um, a lot of people are coming to the forum when they're very frustrated and annoyed and can get very angry very quickly. I remember one person who's like, I spent two weeks on this. Now, why can't you help me or something? And yeah, like, don't wait two weeks, first of all. Um, check out the official resources first. But if you have trouble, please ask on the phone.
just remember that no one is being paid to answer your questions. All right, so when you get the uh, first create a topic, you'll probably be having an image analysis problem. And if you do, you will get this kind of sample prompt right here. I strongly encourage you to kind of follow along and fill in most of the information that you can. Not all of it's going to apply to every particular problem, but the more you can fill in, the faster you will generally get your question answered. And in, for those who download it and want to take a look, here's an example of someone getting in, like they did all of the things. They provided sample images. They provided their code as an IJM file and as text so that someone could just look at it. And they provided some background challenges and the error message all formatted. And they got their question answered in about an hour and a half. So the turnaround time can be very good. Um, it's kind of non sequitur, but we did talk about uh, image formation earlier. And so I just wanted to throw it in here um, as a resource. There is a workshop or a set of workshops coming up next week, I2K 2023. It's halfway to 2024. Um, but there are two different um, workshops on creating reproducible figures through Inkscape, which was mentioned earlier, either through Fiji and Inkscape or Inkscape R and Python and ImageJ. So check those out if you're interested in generating good quality figures. Um, and just wanted to mention that QPath is also being shown in that I2K. All right, scripting. First of all, there is, again, official documentation if you're just getting started with scripting, and there's a lot of good information on creating custom scripts, or as we've seen in just the last session, converting workflows into scripts. So if you kind of forget that, you don't want to go back through the videos for this, um, the information, a lot of it is right there. Uh, next, the Java docs are accessible through the help menu. So if you have a script and you have a particular word or feature or something you want to get help on, you should be able to just go up to the help menu, open the Java docs, type that in, and get some information about that particular function in the form. The other thing I like to mention, because this was amazing to me when I found it, is the describe function. If you have a particular object and you're not quite sure what to do with it, you can describe that object and get an output that'll show all the different things that you can do, like dot that object. So. Uh, one of the first things you'll see in many scripts on the forum is you'll get current image data. You'll save that to a variable called image data, and then you'll do uh, image data dot get server. So that is one of the things you can do with the current image data, but there are many others, and you can look through those lists, or you can potentially do a describe on the server then and see what you can do with that. So this is just a way of exploring what functions are possible and what you can do with each type of object. What does the void class mean? Void means it's not returning anything. You're just doing nothing. So the first value here is what it returns. So like if I get the color deconvolution stains, I'm going to get a color deconvolution stains object. And anything inside the parentheses is what you have to pass to it. So if I wanted to get property, I would have to tell it which property I want to get. Good question. Thank you. Um, also for scripting, there is my website. Um, it's just intended as a kind of intro to scripting. There's a bit of information on exporting images. There's a whole bright field workflow from start to finish with a lot more text than you probably will want, but I had fun. Um, and up and coming, there are uh, multiplex analysis videos that we're working on to take you all the way from creating a project to doing some complex uh, classifiers and spatial analysis. Um, I'll post more about that. And I think I posted the first video in Slack this morning. Um, and yes, these are some of the topics right here. The most common hits I get on the website are the quick reference guide, though. So if you want to quickly remember, how do I get my annotations, or how do I get my detections, or how do I get all the objects inside of an ROI that aren't necessarily part of the hierarchy? There's a quick reference guide. And then there's... Is quick reference guide open all the time? I love to say reference guide. Makes it feel worthwhile. Um, all right. And then there's an entire section on exporting images, probably the most commonly referenced site. Um, with This is just the table of contents. Um, so when people are asking questions about why can't it, why isn't it so easy to just export my image? It's because there's many ways, many reasons to export images, whether you're creating a mask that you want to be class-based or instant-based, where every cell is like a value of one, value of two, value of three. If you want these on multiple layers for the different classes, there are many things you can do in terms of exporting. And this goes through most of them, although I probably need to add a section on the density maps because there was just another forum post recently about exporting density maps as images. All right. Um, I think extensions have been mentioned quite a bit, so I don't really need to go into that, but you can search for a lot of extensions. Does anyone actually want to talk about AI? Yeah. No? Okay. Um, so before I 
harp on it too much. I want to mention that I use AI tools basically every day <clears throat> uh, for segmenting cells, removing noise. This is cell pose. It's one of the more common ones. I'm using chat GPT all the time. Uh, sorcery is our code of, uh, code of conduct was written by chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have just started to think about the bugs and masses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Speaking of which, ever since I had COVID the first time, I cough a lot more now. So that was two years ago. All right. Sorcery is a code for VS, uh, VS Code plugin, um, which I find very useful. It checks your code for patterns. It'll say, oh, you have this for loop. That for loop's going to run slowly. You should use some kind of list comprehension instead. It's really useful. And then stable code is kind of a code prediction like GitHub Copilot, but free. Um, I mostly actually use that for auto-completing comments because it will predict my comments much better than it predicts my code. Um, and, you know, so there are a lot of uses for these things. Um, and here, here's where I was uh, trying to fit an ellipse because I was tracing my sample around as I rotated it in a tube for light sheet microscopy, and it was able to just build a ransack function to um, eliminate the out of focus points and trace the ellipse or through the majority of the good points. And it did that in like one or two tries. It's really nice. I also use it for art and design occasionally. Microsoft designers, Stable Diffusion Excel, creating icons and figures and stuff. All right. On the other hand, ChatGPT and QBath. So on the upside, um, in general, chatbots, there are quite a few options. These are better than others. Some are better than others. I'm not going to go through all the details because that would be many lectures. Um, I, in particular, use ChatGPT4, and I pay for it. Um, it's quick to get answers. It has amazing knowledge of standard coding practices, though not best coding practices. I think anyone who's truly experienced will be upset and annoyed by the code that ChatGPT spits out. Anyone who doesn't really know how to code, though, will be like, wow, this might work. <laughs> um, and it might, uh, sometimes. I, I find it incredibly useful for particular things, though, like generating regular expressions, provided you ask the questions particularly well and are very specific about what you want. But regular expressions can be very intimidating to look at otherwise. Um, and as I mentioned, I it works well with the uh, plugin for VS Code. Uh, the bad. So um, generally, it knows has pretty good understanding of Python, Java, CSS. It can pull out, spit out a whole website. On the other hand, QPath and Fiji, those are tiny little corners of the internet. It doesn't really have much training data on those. Even if it was able to read the whole Java docs, that's just a small proportion of what people post online. It is going to hallucinate the heck out of that. And I will show an example of the, that. Um, yeah. And any code that it spits out for you, always test it, do some unit tests. Um, and the, you have to be very careful about your prompt design and any kind of extremely long code, it tends to run into memory loss problems. Go ahead. Scene or editing screen, but it's fairly new, like the RE check GPT integration. Omega. Omega, right. Yes. Does it work or is it just kind of- It works and is dangerous. Wait, the things for a good yeah. Um, I do not use it, but- um, I will comment on it. All right, so chatbots, uh, the worst part. Uh, they don't really understand anything. They fool us into thinking they understand things, but they're really just a word prediction program, and it looks good, and we interpret that and put our knowledge into it. The link here is to the stochastic parrots paper. Um, and the fact that they don't understand anything doesn't mean they can't be useful, but just there's a lot of hype going into that because people want money for their companies, and it's... Again, it's useful, but it's not intelligent. All right, simple problems. It's great for non-coders still. Um, complex problems, uh, you definitely need some coding experience to troubleshoot. I used it frequently in my uh, microscope hardware control, um, and it was very useful until it wasn't. Um, and arming your element, LLM can lead to bad things, so all the chatbots themselves don't actually do anything. They provide some like text output, but then you can write, say, another program in Python to look at that text output, run something in real the real world, say hardware control, and then return some information back to ChatGPT, have it process it, and go back and forth. And that's like arming the LLM, and that's what they did with Napari Omega. And I wanted to include this link. Uh, it's a whole bunch of AI fails. Um, some of them are really funny. Some of them are terrible and racist. But if you ever want to. Convince yourself that AI is not immediately going to take over the world. Some of these are pretty good. 
Omega, giving chatbots agency. And this is the warning from the uh, GitHub page on Omega. It warns you that uh, depending on how you type your prompts, you can it will just download libraries, possibly libraries that you don't want. If you ask it to delete some files, it might delete all of your files. Like it, it's you have to be very careful when you use these tools. Essentially, it would be interesting to have something like this for uh, QPath maybe, but it would need to be. You need to make sure you put limits on it. All right. So what does that mean in QPath? I had a test case where I just said, all right, this was my prompt. Write me a script in QPath, which uses Groovy. I'm letting it know the language. To generate a whole image annotation, detect cells within that area. Assume the image is bright field and the pixel size metadata has been set. This seems like it should be all right. You know, I mean, we've seen that the default settings in QPath can do amazing things. Like, what happens? So it knows what QPath is. This is good. Good start. And it has a simple script written in Groovy to generate exactly what I said and do what I said. Um, image data equals get current image data. We actually just looked at an example of me looking at that code before, so that's good. It's a good start. Uh, check to see if we have an image loaded. See if the image data equals no, I think, it, or no. That's decent. That'll run. Uh, if we look at the next bit, though, it has this uh, simple threshold cell detection. And I don't know if you remember what that cell detection looked like in your scripts, but it definitely started with a run plugin. Um, yeah, so that throws an error immediately. Um, if I look this up in the Java docs, I can see that there is no simple threshold cell detection in the Java docs at all. Yeah. So I went back and forth with it a little bit. If you download this again, if you click on that chat link, that is the chat that I actually used for that script. And I go back and forth and say, hey, it actually uses the run plugin and it messes that up too. Like it really does not know anything QPath specific or is not good at that. Um, on the other hand, I was able to use it to modify my Cytomap scripts to just kind of improve the code in general. And there was another forum post where somebody was asking for tumor erosion and dilation. So you have a tumor annotation inside of a tissue annotation, and it will kind of bloom it outward in several steps and erode it in several steps. And I use ChatGPT to really clean up that code and make it a lot nicer and improve the commenting. So again, it can modify QPath code that you've written and improve your coding practices, um, but it doesn't really know the QPath functions. And if you try to make it use QPath functions, it will just make something up. Uh, and this is just another example of that failing. I was like, I, I was doing that, uh, playing around with that forum post where you, I was expanding the annotations and I wanted to stop at individual points. And I was like, oh, I'll use ChatGPT to design this like dialogue pop-up. Really great. And you can kind of see how much code it took ChatGPT to create that little pop-up. But Pete already has like a one line script that does that. And it didn't know about that even though, yeah. Anyway, summary. The online LLMs are very powerful and can be useful for new coders, especially if you want to do things that are um, not specific to the program that you're working with. So non-QPath specific code I've used it for is like helping me write a function to write out files, open the CSV file and process them, processing strings or you know generating regular expressions. But you don't really want to use it for anything, again, QPath related. All right. So it's start in terms of resources, order of operations. First, check your the main read the docs if you have a problem. Second, search for your problem on image SC or the GitHub issues. I didn't really talk about GitHub issues too much, but that tends to be where things go if they can't be solved on the forum. Um, for scripting, try the Java docs first. See if that function that you're interested in exists there. Use described on any describe on any objects, and you know check out my website if you just want general coding advice. Um, finally, create a topic on the image SC forum. That's the uh, the end goal is to get you guys there and asking good questions, but you know, do due diligence first and see if the answer is already out there because there are again 3,400 some topics already on QPath. It's entirely possible your question has already been asked. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> any questions about any of that? <laughs>